In this video, we're going to explain why an intermediate language, such as bytecode, is produced as the final output of some compilers and how it's subsequently used. OK, so we're going to go back down to our diagram here, which we've been using for the last couple of videos, and we're going to focus on this stage, intermediate code. I'm going to explain what it is and why some languages generate it. So you can think of intermediary code as a kind of halfway standard language, which can then be translated further into machine-specific code. Now, this intermediate code is completely useless on its own. You won't be able to run it on any computer without some further translation step. It's designed, however, to run on a kind of pretend machine, which we call a virtual machine. And these virtual machines are installed on each make of computer. The virtual machines perform the job of taking the generic intermediate code and then translating it into specific machine code. Now, the example we're going to look at here is Java. Now, this is a language which generates an intermediate code known as bytecode. And it's one of the most commonly accepted um, and used forms of an intermediary language. So the Java source code, which the programmer would actually write and edit, produces a file with a .java extension. And they could be writing this on any type of computer. They could um, have a Java integrated development environment installed in a Windows machine, a Mac, a Linux machine, and they're happily going away and writing their .java source file. When they're happy that it's bug free and ready, they then run the compilation tool on their machine and it chucks out some byte code. Now this is the Java version of its intermediary code. Now this byte code has a separate extension to it called dot class. You can now send this byte code and distribute it to whoever you like. The beauty with this standard halfway language is as long as we have a Java virtual machine and JVM installed in our target machine, we don't have to care as the programmer what machine it's going to end up on. The Java virtual machine understands this standard bytecode. They can all read it. It's one universally agreed standard code. What the Windows version of the JVM does is take that um, intermediate generic bytecode and then translate it into specific machine code. And of course that can happen on any device that has the intermediate Java virtual machine installed. The Java virtual machine is an extra layer. So it has to translate this bytecode into machine code. You can see here with a programming high level language like C++ we directly compile our source code into machine code. But with Java, we compile the source code into bytecode, and then the Java virtual machine interprets it again into machine code. This obviously looks like quite an unnecessary overhead, but with this additional layer, we're allowed to run Java programs on any platform which has their own Java virtual machine. And this is the huge advantage of bytecode and other intermediary languages.